In this lecture, we will solve one important question. This question is important because we will calculate the Fourier transform using the method of differentiation when the given time domain signal is combination of both ramps and steps. And after calculating the Fourier transform using the method of differentiation, I will give you one short trick to solve this question. This makes this question an important question. So let's move to the solution of the question. We know when we have the time domain signal, which is combination of ramps or combination of steps or combination of both ramps and steps, then we can use the method of differentiation. And the central idea of method of differentiation is to differentiate the signal waveform till we have the waveform which is combination of impulses and we know when we differentiate when we differentiate step one time we get impulse when we differentiate ramp one time we get step and differentiation of step one time will give us impulse and our prime aim is to get the signal waveform which is combination of impulses and it is clear that one time differentiation of the signal which is combination of steps will give us the impulse and two times differentiation of the signal which is combination of ramps will give us the impulse but when the signal is combination of step and ramp then the differentiation will limit to 1 and after that we need to break the signal and then calculate the Fourier transforms separately. I will explain the process in detail. We will first differentiate the signal xt and this will give us signal dxt over dt and you can see signal xt is having 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 straight lines. The first line which is from minus infinity to minus 1 is having the slope equal to 0. So the waveform of dxt over dt will look like this. From minus infinity to minus 1 slope is equal to 0. This means dxt over dt is equal to 0. The second line is having the slope equal to infinity and there is downward level switching so we will have an impulse representing the infinite slope and the strength or the weight of the impulse is equal to minus 1 1 is the discontinuity signal value is equal to 0 here and then the signal value becomes minus 1 so the discontinuity is equal to 1 and the negative sign here represents the downward level switching. After this we will move to the third line which is starting from minus 1 and ending at t equal to 1 and this line is having the slope equal to 1. So from minus 1 to 1 the waveform will look like this dxt over dt will be equal to 1 now when t is equal to 1 there is downward level switching slope of the fourth line is equal to infinity so we will have an impulse when t is equal to 1 and the strength or weight of the impulse is equal to minus 1 the fifth line is having the slope equal to 0 from 1 to plus infinity we are having the fifth line with slope equal to 0 so the waveform will look like this from 1 to plus infinity I will join the two points and the two points here and in this way we have the complete waveform of dxt over dt we are having two impulses and the whole waveform is not combination of only impulses. So we need to break the signal waveform into two different signal waveforms. Let's say this waveform is the waveform of signal x1t having only impulses and this waveform is the waveform of signal x2t in which we are having the rectangular function and dxt over dt 
will be equal to x1 t plus x2 t d x t over d t is equal to signal x1 t plus signal x2 t and now we will take the Fourier transform on both the sides this will give us j omega multiplied to x omega let's say the Fourier transform of x1 t is equal to x1 omega and the Fourier transform of x2 t is equal to x2 omega so j omega multiplied to x omega is equal to x1 omega plus x2 omega so if we can calculate x1 omega and x2 omega we can easily calculate x omega which is our task so let's focus on signal x1 t and signal x2 t one by one signal x1 t is having two impulses so we can write x1 t is equal to minus delta t plus one for the first impulse minus delta t minus one for the second impulse so x1 t is equal to minus i have taken common delta t plus one plus delta t minus one and now we will take the Fourier transform on both the sides Fourier transform of x1 t is x1 omega minus Fourier transform of delta t plus 1 using the time shifting property is equal to e power j omega and Fourier transform of delta t minus 1 is equal to e power minus j omega now I will multiply 2 in numerator and 2 in denominator e power j omega plus e power minus j omega divided by 2 is equal to cos omega so we can write the Fourier transform x1 omega equal to minus 2 cos omega now we will calculate the Fourier transform x2 omega we are having the rectangular function and we know the Fourier transform of a rectangular function is equal to a tau sampling omega tau by 2 here a which is the amplitude is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 2 so x2 omega is equal to 1 multiplied to 2 sampling omega multiplied to 2 divided by 2 so x2 omega is equal to 2 sampling omega or we can write 2 sine omega divided by omega now we will add x1 omega and x2 omega and then divide it by j omega so let's perform the calculations quickly the Fourier transform x omega will be equal to x1 omega plus x2 omega divided by j omega I'm writing this from here and we have calculated x1 omega it is equal to minus 2 cos omega so we have minus 2 cos omega divided by j omega and we have also calculated x2 omega it is equal to 2 sin omega divided by omega so we will have plus 2 sin omega divided by j omega and when this omega is multiplied we will have j omega square now we will multiply j in numerator and j in denominator this will give us j square in the denominator j square is equal to minus 1 so we can write the Fourier transform x omega equal to 2j cos omega divided by omega minus 2j sine omega divided by omega square I will take 2j common so we are having x omega equal to 2j inside the bracket cos omega divided by omega minus sin omega divided by omega square and if you match the four options you will find option b is the correct option so in this way you can easily calculate the Fourier transform using the method of differentiation and now I will explain the shortcut method 
the shortcut method will use the xt x omega pairs you can see signal xt is a real as well as odd signal it is real because you can see its values are real no imaginary values are there so signal xt is a real signal and it is also an odd signal because when you perform the time reversal and then the amplitude reversal you will have the same signal so xt is real and odd and from xt x omega pairs we know when xt is real and odd the fourier transform is imaginary and odd and if you see the four options you will find all the four options are imaginary so we have to focus on the next information that is x omega should be odd so let's see how we can check whether x omega is odd or even or combination of both odd and even for this we will focus on the individual terms here cos omega is there and we know cos omega is even in nature omega is there omega is odd in nature when you plot the waveform of omega you will find it is like this and this is the waveform of an odd signal sin omega is odd omega is odd so we are having even divided by odd even divided by odd minus odd divided by odd odd divided by odd and we can write 1 over odd equal to odd so here we will have even multiplied to odd minus odd multiplied to odd even multiplied to odd is equal to odd and odd multiplied to odd is equal to even so option a is having the fourier transform which is combination of both odd and even and now we will move to the option b here we are having cos omega this means even divided by omega this means odd sin omega this means odd omega square this means even so we are having even divided by odd minus odd divided by even we can write this as even multiplied to odd minus odd multiplied to even because 1 over even is equal to even even multiplied to odd will give us odd and odd multiplied to even will again give us odd odd minus odd will give us purely odd so you can see b option is having the fourier transform which is odd in nature so b option is satisfying our condition it is imaginary as well as odd when you check option c and option d you will find they are not having purely odd fourier transform so in this way also you can easily obtain the answer within seconds so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one